This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, I'm Kay and I've been learning how to code on the iPad. So if you haven't seen my past video on coding on the iPad, I'll have that linked below for you. That really walks you through why I've decided to try to learn coding and why I'm trying to learn coding specifically using the iPad. I do have Swift Playgrounds and a number of other apps downloaded on the new iPad Air that was just released. And it was really just because I wanted to try it out on the iPad, kind of make it more of a game and kind of an incentive to learn. And with how often I find that Apple is now pushing how to learn how to code, especially using the iPad, I thought, why not pick up the iPad and try to learn a new skill like the many other skills that I've tried to learn using the iPad. Episode two here, we're gonna catch you up on what I've done so far for learning coding on the iPad. So I'm using a number of different resources to learn how to code specifically in Swift on the iPad since that is the language that many iOS apps are written in and it's become a very valuable skill, especially with how easy it is to pick up and learn Swift, especially if you're already an established coder. I've also been using a lot of written resources and textbooks to learn Swift as well. My learning style is to do it and then to learn it. So kind of struggle my way through trying to code and script specific lines of code to move my little character within the game, within Swift Playgrounds and a number of other things. And then later referring to textbooks or lecture slides or video tutorials on learning very specific things within the code itself as well. So I'm using a number of different resources to try and get kind of an all-in-one approach since a lot of people approach coding differently. So one of the first things that I've learned throughout the process of coding and some things that you want to do to kind of set yourself up for success that aren't necessarily specific to coding, but will benefit kind of the long term if you decide that you really want to pursue coding and want to share your code with others. So the first is to create an Apple developer account. So you can go to developer.apple.com and you can sign in with your Apple ID and password if you already have one. If you have an iPad, then you should have an Apple ID and password that you can use to sign in to create an Apple developer account. Apple developer accounts are free, but being a part of the Apple developer program itself is not. To be a part of the Apple developer program is $99 annually, and that allows you to publish your apps to the App Store to use. But as an Apple developer account, you can access those same features. And then when you're ready to publish your app to the App Store for the public to use, you can go ahead and pay that annual fee. There are student and teacher and I think educational discounts that will waive that fee. The second step that a lot of coders recommend when you're just getting started is to create a GitHub account. So creating a GitHub account is also free and it offers a lot of benefits for coders especially. It's the largest online software repository. It's essentially just a huge database of code, of open source code that people will share, they can look at and learn from. It allows you to also upload your own versions of code. So for instance, let's say you're coding an app, you can upload that version of code and then when you go back to your original code and you decide to make changes, if for whatever reason, if something breaks, you still have access to your older code through GitHub. So that was a recommendation for those just getting started with coding is to create a GitHub account because not only can you access other people's codes that they're sharing or to learn from those people, you can also upload your own versions of code, perhaps to share with other people or to have kind of access to if you ever mess up your code or something gets deleted or anything like that. It also allows you to collaborate with a team if you're working with a team on your code. And it's also a great place for managing your software development type of portfolio because you can link to your GitHub account and recruiters can see that and see what code you have written. So GitHub, great resource for learning, also a great resource for sharing a portfolio and connecting with others. And if you decide that you want to pursue coding as either a career or a side hustle or anything, a lot of recruiters, should you decide to be a software developer or coder, will be looking specifically for links to your GitHub profile. The third step, which kind of goes in connection with that is to link your LinkedIn profile to that GitHub account. So again, if there are recruiters or anyone looking specifically for software developers, junior, senior design developers, and so on, they can access your LinkedIn profile and see your GitHub account that is connected to that. And GitHub serving as, of course, your software portfolio 
So that is what I have started with. I've done those three steps, created my app, Apple developer account, created a GitHub account, mainly so I can see other people's code. And what's great about that is that you're able to download their code and it's easy to kind of follow someone else's logic when coding because there are different ways that people choose to code. And it's really great being able to kind of make my changes to see what changes on kind of the back end of things or on the front end of things. And then linking that to a LinkedIn account should I ever decide to share my code with others. The next thing I did is kind of go through the first steps of learning to code. And so in Swift Playgrounds, that is the kind of learn to code part one module that will walk you through kind of the very basics and very foundation of code. And it's typically what you'll learn across any of the coding languages. So if then or statements, so things like um, if you do this, then this will happen in the code. Those are typically the first things that you'll start with when learning code. And as well as how to kind of move your character, they do have this character called Byte, and it will walk you through how to make him move or collect gems or when not to collect gems. And so that's when those if then or statements come in. And yeah, so that's what I've worked through for coding on the iPad, just kind of setting up my setting up setting myself up for success by creating these accounts so i can access code later or have that serve as my database and my storage for any code that i decide to write and then also on kind of the front end of things of actually learning those foundations either by the lecture slides that i found or swift playgrounds itself to have that do it and learn it or do it while you're learning it type of code I will link the resources that I'm using in the description because I did find a really great online version of a coding class that was done, I believe at Stanford. This professor uploaded all of his lecture slides and all of his video tutorials on this great page where you're able to kind of walk through the steps. And I believe in the very first lesson, you're coding an app right away. So I, I find that with a lot of the coding approach, especially for Swift, is to just jump right into it and start coding right away because like any other language to learn how to code you actually have to do it and so I'm doing that and then supplementing that with the lecture slides and the textbook that I'll have linked in the description below for you but that's where I've been and that's where I'm going and moving on into kind of the next modules of coding kind of building up onto those foundations and being able to create my own code from scratch is kind of the next step what's great about Swift Playgrounds is that it is very game-like and there's kind of an incentive to move your character or have your character collect things. And so it's a lot more interactive than just seeing lines of code and then just copying that for myself. There's a real challenge to making sure my character moves, making sure my character collects gems, making sure my character doesn't bug out. And one thing that I've really liked about Swift Playgrounds especially is that there are parts within that first module that I've been talking about that actually Apple has actually created a very bugged version of one of those modules where you actually have to go in and correct those bugs and those glitches to ensure that your character actually does move and collect the gems, which I found really helpful to be able to see those mistakes and correct them myself. So hopefully they'll continue that throughout the module, but I will work through other lessons for the day and kind of refer to my notes. However, I really like the approach of just doing it all on my iPad because my iPad is portable. It's really easy. I can connect the magic keyboard to it and just kind of code on the go, which is a major plus to doing that versus having this really heavy Xcode program on my MacBook, which is 16 inches. So being able to do it all from my iPad, since I am an iPad focused creator as well, has been really, really key and handy in the coding experience of the iPad. It also makes coding a lot more accessible to people who do have iPads and don't want to invest in these heavy, heavy programs and computers to be able to code. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll love the first episode of the Coding on iPad series, which again, I'll have linked in the cards and linked in the description for you. And I'm going to continue creating these videos to catch you up on where I've learned, on what I've learned in the code and to kind of just show you the experience of coding on the iPad because I found the content I find any content when it comes to coding on the iPad to be very, very slim. So hopefully you find this enjoyable. Let me know down below if you are experienced in coding, if you're just learning to code and whether or not you're using your iPad, I would love to hear about it.
Thank you so much to Skillshare for supporting the channel. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative and inspiring classes that cover a variety of topics and skills. Skills and projects like Procreate Illustration, video editing, and social media are just the many things that I like to learn using Skillshare. While there are so many great reasons for using Skillshare, like for fun, to get better at a skill for your business or your side hustle, or just for your own personal growth, lately I've enjoyed using it for self-care, which is why I've really been loving Mimi Chow's class called Mindful Drawing 101, Guided Prompts for Creative Self-Care. Because I really value Skillshare, and how it has helped me as a creator and a designer, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description or to use my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And if you have any coding resources specifically for Swift and coding on the iPad, I would love to see it. So let me know where to go if you have any suggestions. But thank you so much for watching. I will be back with the third episode of Coding on the iPad hopefully very soon, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.